Okay, we are going to be making um, Roy Lichtenstein self-portraits today. I'm going to start you with the first step. Um, things that you will need. You will need markers, uh, primary colors, blue, yellow, and red. Pencil. Well, ah, there he goes. And paper clips. You will also need your self-portrait or excuse me, your picture that we're going to make the self-portrait from. You'll need a piece of tracing paper and you will need grid paper. Okay, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to transfer our picture that we took on our iPad onto the tracing paper. The tracing paper is what you will be making your portrait on. One other thing I forgot to mention you will need is a light box. These are brand new. I think I have about six of them, so please handle them with care. Right now my light box is on. I'm going to turn it. <clears throat> okay, so my light box is on. I need to trace my self-portrait, or my portrait, onto my tracing paper. So I want to get my corners lined up. So this page of the tracing paper is not quite as wide as what our final piece is going to be. So to avoid having like two cut off shoulders on your original paper, um, we are going to kind of maneuver yourself off to the side a little bit. My picture is going to be off of my tracing paper just a little bit. All right, I am going to paper clip this on so it doesn't move around in the corners. Okay, so I have it paper clipped on. It's not going anywhere. All right, now using my pencil, I am just going to go around and start outlining the basic shapes of my face. Just the lines. We're doing a contour drawing. We're not going to get into a lot of detail. Things that you should be getting on yours are obviously your eyes, um, maybe just an outline, a little bit of your nose, maybe the creases around your eyes. I have a lot more than you do. I'm a lot older than you. Okay, I'm just going to keep going. There's my nose. I don't want to do the whole nose. Um, I just want to do like around my nostrils to keep in the Roy Lichtenstein style. My mouth, I want to get my lips and my teeth if they're showing on yours. And I'm just gonna keep going around and around looking for things to keep outlining. Don't worry about going into too much detail. Um, we actually don't want a lot of detail in these portraits because a lot of it is going to be filled up with bende dots anyway. So you can see a little bit of my ear. Okay, so I have just a little bit of my, my picture. I will switch over to the one that I already have done so you can see what it should look like. I'll turn my light box off. I don't need that anymore. Okay. This is the one, this is my final one. See, all I have is like my eyes, my eyebrows, I've got my hair, my teeth. I don't have a whole lot of detail on it and I don't want that. Okay, next comes the fun part. We are going to use a graph paper, um, something I'm sure you see in math class. So I'm gonna place this underneath my picture and now I get to decide um, what do I want to be Bende dots. Remember we talked about those a little bit. Those are the dots that um, newspaper presses used. I'll show you just a little bit on how I did this before, before I move on to that. Okay, here I have a little example of some Bende dots I did. I put my graph paper under my tracing paper. And it really helps if you use this graph paper. It just makes it look so much more uniform and it really gets the idea of Bende dots. Then it's not too crowded in one area and too sparse in another area. 
Okay, so I have it lined up. Now what I chose to do was I thought, well, maybe I'll do my face in like red, or excuse me, blue bende dots. So using a marker, I decided to kind of make it so they're in like diagonal rows. So I'm going along and I'm putting a dot wherever there's an intersection of lines. And then I decided to do one right in the middle. It doesn't have to be perfect. I, I, like I said, I, I don't expect you guys to be perfect. You're not robots, you're kids, you're people. So all I'm doing is, and I don't really have to push hard or draw a circle. I'm just making a mark. See how I'm not like drawing this great big circle in my dot? I'm really just touching my tracing paper with it. And that gives me my Bende dots. And they're in a nice little diagonal row, and it really makes it interesting. So to transfer that over, here's my portrait. So I'm going to use my paper clip once again and clip yours or clip any of them, all of them, onto your paper. Okay, again, it's not going anywhere. That's what I want. So I decided I was going to do my face in the bende dot. So again, I'm just going to start, let's start up here on my forehead. I'm going to put a dot there on all the corners where all the lines meet and then I'll put one in the middle. And I'm just going to continue this around. I'm only going to do my face, my skin. My skin on my face. I don't want to go up into my hair yet. That I've decided to do something different with. And I'm not going to do my eyebrows or my eyes or my mouth or my teeth. I'm only doing the skin on my face. So I'm going to continue, continue to do this and I will be back with you guys in a minute. Okay, I am back and you can see I have all my dots on my Roy Lichtenstein self-portrait. Looks a little creepy. Looks like I might be sick or something. Um, one other thing too, I forgot to skip this step and it is really, really important. Um, please use a fine tip Sharpie, to go over all of your pencil lines that you made on your contour drawing. When you are finished, make sure that you erase any of your pencil marks in there. That will really make your craftsmanship um, wonderful. And you'll have a really nice finished piece when you're done. So the step I forgot was to go back in and outline your pencil with black fine tip Sharpie. So please do that. <clears throat> before you add in your bende dots. Okay, now that I have my bende dots in, um, I can start deciding. I think this is, this is all the bende dot that I'm going to use on my portrait. So the rest of me, I am going to color in with primary colors. I'm going to use red and yellow. I already have quite a bit of blue in my face, so I don't think I really want to continue on with more blue in the rest of my picture. I don't know, we'll see how it goes. Okay, so I decided I'm gonna have red hair. So I'm just gonna go right along using my red marker. I might have to pull out some new ones. These look a little dried up. I'm just gonna go around and I'm going to color in all of my hair red. I won't do that in front of you for time's sake, so I'll finish that later. Once I have all my hair colored in red, I decided I was gonna make my eyebrows yellow even though they're not really, but it's just really interesting. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to color in my eyebrows yellow. Now one thing you have to be careful with is the yellow, sometimes it likes to pick up a little bit of that black from the Sharpie. So watch out for that, okay? Got my eyebrows in. I think maybe next I will do my mouth. I will keep my lips red. You can use the um, fine tip markers too. If you have really small little details, um, that would work really well too. 
to stay in those lines and get the small areas. I'm going to leave my teeth white, but I think um, maybe the area around them, I don't know, I'll have to think about that. Maybe I'll make that black in there in my area around my teeth where my gums are. So I'm going to continue to color this in and I will be right back. I have my ben, or my Bende dots are added. I have added in my dark colors with the primary colors. Um, I have my face outlined. Pencil lines are all erased. And I have the entire picture is, looks like it's finished. So we're going to set these aside. Um, be really careful with them. They do bend really easy and they might rip really easy. Tracing paper is very thin. So handle it with care. Alright, the next thing that you're going to be working on is adding your onomatopoeia. Remember that is a word um, that makes a sound. Could be like pow, kabam, crash, any words like that where it's a sound, but it's a word representing the sound. So the one that I chose to do for myself um, was the word zoom. I picked zoom because I feel like I'm always rushing around trying to get everything done. So that was the word that I picked for my onomatopoeia. What you will need for this project, this piece of your um, Roy Lichtenstein portrait, is you will need a marker, probably um, a regular tip, one of the, the thicker tip um, Sharpies. You'll need newspaper. Try to find newspaper that does not have um, pictures on it. We want like the inside of it. Don't get the front page where it has all the color um, pictures and everything. And you will need a piece of typing paper. Okay, just your eight and a half by 11 typing paper. And a pencil, of course. I don't know where mine went. Oh, here it is. And a pencil. Okay, we're going to work on just sketching out um, different ways to write your onomatopoeias. You're going to be writing these in thick letters. I don't want to see them just in little pencil lines like this. This is fine when you're trying to figure out how you want your letters to be planned out. But when it comes time to draw them, I want them thick so you have something to color in. Okay, this is what I'm after. One way um, that I like to do it is I just like to start sketching it out really, really lightly. Please don't press down hard because you're going to need to erase these pencil lines. And if we have them really dug into the paper, um, they will not erase well, so make sure that you are writing very, very lightly. I want to take a second and talk about placement. Um, some people get really frustrated because they start writing their word on their paper, on their final piece, and then they get to the end of the paper and it doesn't fit. So one way to avoid that happening is to write out your letter or your word. Okay, mine is going to be Zoom. I have four letters. And then I decided I was going to add on an um, exclamation mark. Zoom, you know, like I'm really flying across the room, zoom. So I actually have five letters that I'm going to be working with. I look for my middle letter, which is going to be my O, right in the middle. So when I would flip this over and I would start placing my letters, I would start with my middle, my middle letter. If you have an even amount of letters, start with your two center ones. Okay, so I would start by placing my O kind of right in the middle. Okay, and when I'm drawing these, these are all going to be cut out together. This whole entire onomatopoeia is going to be cut out as one piece of art. So I want my letters to overlap each other and be connected at some point. You can decide if your O is overlapping the other letter, whatever it is, you decide. Okay, so I'm just going to keep on sketching out my word zoom. And then I'm going to add on my exclamation mark. And he, notice how he's connected to my M. It's not off by himself, so I won't have to cut out a separate letter. Okay, and I'm going to add in my other O. Maybe that one will overlap like that somehow. I'm going to draw the insides of them. And then my last one. I want to make my Z a little bit bigger than the rest so it really sticks out. People know that I am zooming. And maybe he goes underneath my O. It's up to you. You can really design this. 
But notice how I'm like really sketching it out lightly. I'm not going really slow and pushing hard. I'm just doing a really, really light sketch. Now I can go back in and I can start erasing my lines and making them a little bit more defined and get the shape in. One thing that I thought was really cool, um, I found this in one of the Roy Lichtenstein books that I looked at, was making the insides of my O's look kind of like an explosion. So you can just kind of go around like this and I'm just kind of making this come out a little bit. Okay, and then I come around. It's kind of a graphic shape that maybe I would find in a comic book. So the inside of my O's are gonna look like that. Kind of like a little explosion. All right, once you have it all sketched out in pencil, I'll show you the one that I have all sketched out in pencil. Now I am going to come back through and I'm gonna start outlining it in Sharpie. Now once again, I want you to stick with the primary colors. Um, I'll outline it in black Sharpie and then I will color it in, I don't know, maybe with blue since I don't have a lot of blue down in my self-portrait, maybe I'll use blue. All right, I will be back with you guys in a minute. Black Sharpie, it is colored in. All my pencil lines, especially in the light color, like yellow or the red, all my pencil lines were erased. I've got excellent craftsmanship and I am ready to cut it out. So what you're going to need is a scissors and I'm just going to start cutting out right along that black line. I want to keep my black line in my onomatopoeia for my self-portrait. So I'm just going to go around, take my time, and cut it out as best as I can. When I get to the parts, um, like the inside of this Z, that are really difficult, and I don't want to fold my paper to get in there, because then I'll have this fold in my Z, and that just doesn't look very professional. Um, what you can do is come see me, and I can help you with the smaller little pieces, and we can cut out, um, we can cut out that piece with an exacto knife. Okay, please don't attempt that to do that on your own. We haven't gone over any of the safety for using exacto knives. So if you have tiny little pieces like inside of an A or an R that you need to have cut out, just come see me and I can quickly cut those out for you. One thing I wanted to make sure that I told you, and you know my rules for using Sharpie in the classroom, when you're using Sharpie to trace your onomatopoeia, please make sure that you have a newspaper underneath that that saves my tables and it saves the custodian a lot of work. Okay, so I will continue to cut this out and then we'll move on to the next step. Okay, I have my onomatopoeia all finished. It is all colored in, um, outlined in Sharpie, cut out. I got the small little pieces out with an X-Acto knife. The next thing I'm going to do is to mount it onto a piece of newspaper. Now I would like you to find the newspaper, like I mentioned before, that doesn't have a lot of pictures on it at least not colored pictures. If it had black and white, I'd be okay with that, but just don't pick the front page where all the color is. Okay, so what I'm going to do next is I'm going to find a background. I'm gonna design a geometric background for my onomatopoeia. So what I'm gonna do is lay that down kind of in the middle of my newspaper. I wish I could get this camera to zoom out so you could see this better. Um, something I'm gonna to have to play around with a little bit and see if I can do that for you in the next one. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do though is I need to glue down my onomatopoeia. So you're going to need a glue stick for this project, this part of the project, and you're also going to need a scissors and a, um, a pencil. My glue's a little tacky, it must be getting old. But just cover the whole back with glue stick. So you get it to stick down really nice and tight. Nothing's gonna be coming up. Okay, now I'm just gonna lay it down so I have a good, maybe a good two inch border of um, newspaper all the way around my onomatopoeia. I'm gonna lay it on the side. You don't have to have the print running up and down on the newspaper if you don't want to. I'm not going to so I avoid that fold right down the middle. So there I have my onomatopoeia glued tight to um, my newspaper. 
Okay, now I'm just going to come up with kind of a, a real geometric zigzag kind of outline around my word zoom. So I'm just going around it with diagonal lines. Nothing fancy. I'm kind of staying away from my words and my letter. So I will have a nice outline all the way, almost like a when you were little when you drew the starburst shape around sun. That's the kind of shape that I'm looking for all the way around your onomatopoeia. I've got it up here, coming around, up here, coming around. It doesn't have to be perfect. Kind of make your zigzags a little bit bigger. Don't make teeny tiny little ones. Um, don't do this all the way around it, like really little ones. It just won't look as effective, and you're going to have to do a ton more cutting. So make them nice and big, kind of like this. All right. The next thing that you're going to do is start cutting these out. Just cut right on your pencil lines and get the whole background for your onomatopoeia cut out of newspaper. Okay, I have my zoom mounted onto my newspaper um, and I have my geometric design behind it. That's the background. It looks really cool this way, but we're going to make it look even cooler. So we're going to add on um, two more layers of construction paper behind it. Um, I am going to use yellow and blue. We're, again, we're sticking with those primary colors. Um, so what I'm going to do is put um, my newspaper cutout on top of a yellow piece of paper. So just hold on for a second. Okay, so I've got my zoom on newspaper. I'm going to lay it down smack dab in the middle of my 12 by 18 size piece of yellow construction paper. You can choose to do whatever you want. You could do red first, then yellow, blue first, then red, whatever you, combination you want to do. So the next thing I'm going to do is outline that same geometric pattern that I made out of the newspaper, but just a little bit bigger onto my yellow piece of paper. But before I get a chance to do that, I need to back up and I need to glue down my newspaper onto the yellow so it doesn't move around. So again, I'm just going to use my glue stick. Put a whole bunch of glue all over my newspaper. Try to get right up into those pointed areas so you know it sticks and it's not flipping up once you get it glued down. Do the best you can, as always. Now I'm going to place this right in the middle of that great big piece of yellow construction paper. All right, it is stuck tight. Okay, I'm just going to show you on one of the little corners. So I'm going to take my pencil, and I'm just going to come out. It doesn't have to be precise. I'm just going to make really lightly so I don't have a lot to erase. Remember, you're just sketching it out. We're not engraving it with pencil. Just keep your lines really, really light the whole way around, and give your construction paper or your newsprint paper, an outline of construction paper. Okay, once you have that outline all done with your pencil, just go around again and cut out your yellow outline all the way around your onomatopoeia. Okay, I have my onomatopoeia mounted on newspaper and then it's mounted to construction paper. I'm going to repeat that same process again with a different primary color. My next color I'm going to choose is blue. So I will glue my yellow construction paper down to the middle again of the blue and I'm going to draw on that exact same geometric pattern again around in the blue 
but just another maybe like half an inch or a quarter inch again just like I did the yellow when you're gluing this down and placing it onto your final piece of construction paper make sure again that you get all the edges and when I place it I want to place it so it's in the middle as much as possible so I can still have that border some of them are going to be a little tight but so I can still have a little bit of border all the way around even at the tips like this one right here is really really close to the edge of that blue so that's okay I mean it's alright I might have to cut that one in just a little bit better a little bit closer there I might not have as much blue there but I think it'll still be really effective up here again you can see I'm really really close to the edge of the blue so maybe when I go to cut it I'll cut that one just a little bit different but it'll still have that great border effect so you can see already that it's really starting to pop and it's really starting to look nice so start drawing again your outline all the way around that corner is really really close but that's okay so just start going around in blue with your pencil making that outline again of that geometric pattern once you have it all drawn in place with the pencil come back along and cut the entire blue outline out once you have it all cut out make sure that you're always coming back in and erasing your pencil lines that's something that I am always always looking for in your craftsmanship if you took the time and the effort to erase all your pencil lines so I have my um, onomatopoeia and my geometric pattern all finished around it. I've got the newspaper. I've got two primary color backgrounds. I am, they're all glued together and I've got all my pencil lines erased. So that part is all finished. The next thing that I'm going to do is go back to my self-portrait that I made earlier and I'm going to cut that out really, really careful. Please be careful when you're cutting this tracing paper because it does cut really, really easy. And you might be surprised and cut pretty quickly and wind up cutting into your picture. So I have my picture, my portrait back again, and like I mentioned before, I'm just gonna start cutting it out. I want to leave on that black line. Please take your time when you're cutting this out. I'm just gonna go all the way around the image that I made earlier. Now I've got some chunks like right in here with my hair, that it's kind of where my hair is curly. I'm not going to worry about cutting that out because this is going to get mounted down to a white piece of 12 by 18 piece of paper. So I will finish cutting this out and then we will move on to the next step. So I have my picture all cut out, the one that I drew earlier. The next step that I'm going to do is I'm going to put my paper, my portrait, um, face down on a piece of newsprint and I'm going to just cover the whole entire thing with glue try to get right up to the corners do not use bottles of glue only use glue sticks the bottles of glue I think they might make your one makes your paper kind of buckle and two it might make your color on your bend day dots start to run and then your whole piece would well, it might just get ruined that's not what we're looking for so just take your time, get it right up to all the edges. Okay, the next thing that you're going to do once you have that done is everybody is going to receive a piece of 12 by 18 paper. What I would like you to do is to use the corner uh, right here, down here on the corner. Match your corner up of your portrait that you drew to the corner of the final piece of paper. If it's not exact, that's okay. We can always trim that off. Start at one end when you're gluing this down and then kind of gradually, really gently, just smooth it up. Kind of like you're putting on like wallpaper on a piece of, on the wall or something. And then just really carefully, because tracing paper is really fragile, just really carefully smooth it down. 
Okay, now I've got mine hanging over just a little bit down here on the bottom. That's okay. I can come back later in and I can cut that down and I might want to add in a little bit more glue down here. This edge is starting to curl up a little bit. So now we have our portrait glued down to the piece of 12 by 18 paper. Now I am ready to put my onomatopoeia on. And now that I look at it, I'm kind of thinking if I was going to do this again, that I would like to make mine a little bit smaller. I made it kind of big and it's gonna be taking up most of my art or my paper, but I'm okay with that. Some of it is going to get trimmed off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place this at the top of my self-portrait. So it's going to look like this. I'm going to turn it on its side and hopefully it, you can see. So I've got my onomatopoeia right above my self-portrait and I'm going to go around and I'm going to glue that onomatopoeia down to the piece of 12 by 18 paper. It might work better to glue the top of your paper um, instead of the back of the onomatopoeia, but just be careful you don't glue down too far and then you've got all these glue marks down by the head of your person and your paper will really start to look sloppy. So maybe up at the top of the 12 by 18, put on the glue on the paper and then maybe down towards the bottom, you might want to just slow down a little bit and make sure that your glue is not sticking out um, from underneath your onomatopoeia. Okay, I'm back. So here I am I'm putting the glue down onto the 12 by 18 piece of paper. Remember I said don't go down too low that you have that glue sticking out um, onto the paper that won't be covered up by the onomatopoeia. So I'm going to place my zoom to make sure that all the letters are on, but I don't want it poking into my head. Mine, like I said, is kind of big. If I was going to do it again, I would definitely shrink mine down. It got kind of big, but that's all right. Okay, so it is stuck. I've got two pieces that are now together. Okay, this is the back side of our Roy Lichtenstein self-portrait. You can see that I've got a lot of that um, geometric pattern, that edge, sticking out over top of my 12 by 18 piece of paper. This is where I'm going to come back in and use a scissors and I'm going to trim off all that extra blue paper that's sticking out. So it will give us a nice tight border around the 12 by 18 piece of paper. When I'm cutting this off, this extra blue, I want to be really careful not to cut into the 12 by 18 piece of paper. So I'm just going to really, really carefully, I'm going to be cutting through three layers of paper so it might feel a little bit thicker in some spots. I'm just going to really carefully stay as close as I possibly can to that white piece of paper and just keep cutting it off. So this is what I have cut off. Notice I don't have any of my word cut off. That I kind of made sure that was going to be on that 12 by 18 piece of paper still, even after trimming. So just continue to do this on all three sides. Again, cutting it as close as you possibly can to that white paper. Take your time so you don't make a mistake. We're in the final steps. I'd hate to see somebody make a mistake right now. Okay. It is done. I'll show you just the corner. You can see the corner of my paper is cut off and I kind of like the way that in some spots I can see a little bit of that graphic, the yellow coming through. That really makes it interesting. It makes me want to look around the whole entire piece of paper. It's much more interesting that way. Okay, we are on to the last steps of our Roy Lichtenstein um, self-portraits. So the next thing I want to do is I've got a lot of white space down there um, around my self-portrait. I'd like to fill that in. I just went online and I looked under comic book symbols and I found some really just neat graphics that a lot of comic book artists use 
to just do some emphasize or emphasis and um, add interest to their images. So what I'm going to do is really carefully and very lightly sketch in with a pencil just maybe like five of them. And I, for mine, I decided to do some really cool, funky looking arrows just because that kind of makes me think of movement and zooming around. Um, arrows are always pointing in which direction you go. So after you find some of those images that you want to put on yours, I'm just going to put mine really randomly around. I think maybe I'll just put an arrow up here. Just drawing it in. Look at how lightly I'm drawing that. It's not really, really dark. I'm not engraving my paper with it. Just really lightly sketching it in. So if I do make a mistake, I can easily erase it out. And then maybe I will put one over here. And, I don't know, maybe I'll only do like three of them. I don't want to do too many and get it all crowded up. I just want to add in a little bit of highlight just to show that fun comic book side of our piece of work. Okay, actually, well, maybe I'll put a little one. You can do lots of different sizes of them too. They don't all have to be the same size. And if you wanted to put different types of ones, Maybe you want to put a lightning bolt and then maybe like little, um, kind of like little blow up symbols like these. You could do those all around your paper as well. And maybe I'll put one kind of like it's coming off my paper. That'll make it more interesting. Okay, so I've got five of them on there. The next thing I'm going to do is trace them with a black Sharpie. You can probably use um, I think the thicker tip would work just fine. Again, make sure that you put newspaper underneath your drawing before you start drawing with Sharpies so you're not marking up the tables. And just start drawing around the comic book symbols that you just added. Once I have these all drawn in with Sharpie, I'm going to come back in and I'm going to add color to them. Again, using the primary colors, those are the only ones I like used in this project. I'm just going to come back in and color these in. I have my um, comic book symbols all shaded in with the marker. I used the yellow on this one. And I have got them outlined in Sharpie. My pencil lines are erased. And I think we are finished with our Roy Lichtenstein self-portraits. Let me just back up here so you can see these. Hold on a minute. Okay, I would call that a very successful self-portrait. So what I would like you to do next is to flip the paper over, sign your name, first and last name on the back, in pencil, and your hour. Please clean up all of your materials. The newspaper that was cut can be put in recycling. If you have any whole sheets, please put them back on the shelf, not on the floor. Put all the markers away and clean up your table spot. I will post this video on Google Classroom. So if there is ever a date when you are um, maybe missing from school, you're sick, or you've got a doctor appointment, something comes up, this is something that you can always refer back to. Um, so you know where we're at in class and you would you can use this video during the class time as well you can get out your Chromebook and um, Get into the Google classroom and view the video as well. So, you know if you need to have something repeated um, Or if you need to clarify some instructions or something like that